Hello, 8th graders, and happy Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about another way that we can solve for missing side lengths in similar triangles. You're going to do a great job. Let's dive right in. Let's start with our do now. Draw the translation of point M two units right and three units down. Go ahead and draw that translation on your paper, and then enter the new ordered pair for M prime in the blank. M prime is located at 1, 1. Now draw the reflection of point M over the x-axis. Go ahead and do that now, then enter the ordered pair for M prime in the blank. M prime is at negative 1, negative 4. Now draw the reflection of point M over the y-axis. Then go ahead and enter the new ordered pair for M prime in the blank. M prime is located at 1, 4. Now let's practice drawing a dilation. Draw the dilation of the quadrilateral with a scale factor of 2 centered at the origin. First, let's find our original ordered pairs. What is the location of point L, point M, point N, and point K? L is located at negative 3, 2, M is located at 4, 5, N is located at 4, negative 3, and k is located at negative 3, negative 5. I know that the scale factor is 2 and the center is the origin, so I can multiply each of my ordered pairs times 2 to find the new location. Go ahead and find the ordered pairs for L prime, M prime, N prime, and K prime. L prime is located at negative 6, 4. M prime is located at 8, 10 n prime is located at 8, negative 6, and k prime is located at negative 6, negative 10. Go ahead and graph those new ordered pairs to draw our dilated shape. Check to see that your dilated figure looks like mine. Now let's move on. First, let's solve with substitution. What is 3a plus 4b when a equals negative 5 and b equals 7? So what's 3? times negative 5 plus 4 times 7. What's 3 times negative 5? 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. What's 4 times 7? It's 28. Now I can add, what's negative 15 plus 28? Well, 28 minus 15 is 13. Now let's solve an equation. 3m plus 17 equals 38. What's the first thing I need to do to solve this equation? I need to subtract 17 from both sides to isolate 3m. 17 minus 17 is 0, so those cancel out. I have 3m left on that side. What's 38 minus 17? It's 21. Now, what operation should I use to isolate M? I need to divide both sides by 3. So what's the value of M? M equals 7. Let's solve another equation. Negative 2x plus 5 equals negative 3. What's the first operation I should use? I need to subtract 5 from both sides. When I do that, Positive 5 and negative 5 cancel out, so I have negative 2x equals, what's negative 3 minus 5? It's negative 8. What should I do now to isolate the x? I need to divide both sides by negative 2. What's negative 8 divided by negative 2? What's the value of x? It's 4. Now let's dive into today's lesson. When you're solving for similar triangles, sometimes it's easier to find the relationships between two sides than the scale factor. When two triangles are similar, the quotients of corresponding side lengths stay consistent. Let's use this to complete a few examples. What's the ratio of the medium side of the triangle to the short side? So let's look. I can see 
that the medium side of the triangle that I know is 30, and the short side is 15. So I can write that as 30 over 15. Now, I can simplify that fraction, simplify that ratio. What's the largest number that goes into both 30 and 15? 15 is the greatest common factor. What's 30 divided by 15? It's 2. What's 15 divided by 15? It's 1. So what this tells me is that the medium side is always 2 times greater than the short side. The ratio is 2 to 1. I can use this knowledge to find n. I know that n is going to be 2 times as great as the short side 12. So 12 times 2 over 1 equals n. So what's the value of n? What's 12 times 2 over 1? n is 24. 24 is 2 times as large as 12. Let's do another example. Look at this problem. What's the ratio of the medium side to the short side? Well, I can see that the medium side I know is 9 and the short side is 6. I can simplify to write that quotient in simplest form, that ratio. What's the largest number that goes into both 9 and 6? It's 3. When I simplify 9 over 6 by dividing both by 3, what's my new fraction? It's 3 over 2. So I know that the medium side will always be 3 over 2 times the short side. Let's find the value of n. I know that the short side is 4. And I can multiply 4 times 3 halves to find n. What's 4 times 3 halves? Well, first let's multiply. What's 4 times 3? It's 12. When I multiply a whole number by a fraction, the denominator stays the same. So it's 12 over 2. I can divide 12 divided by 2 to find n. What's 12 divided by 2? It's 6. The value of n is 6. 6 is 3 halves times as much as 4. Let's do another example. What's the ratio of the medium side to the short side? Well, what's the medium side I know? It's 12. What's the short side I know? It's 6. So the ratio is 12 over 6. I can simplify. What's the largest number that goes into both 12 and 6? It's 6. When I divide, what is that fraction written in simplest form? It's 2 over 1. So I know that the ratio of the medium side to the short side will always be 2 over 1. I can multiply the short side times 2 over 1 to find r. What's the short side in triangle DEF? It's 8. What's 8 times 2 over 1? 8 times 2 over 1 is 16. r equals 16 because it's 2 times as large as the short side. Let's do a few more. Look at these two triangles. What's the ratio of the short side to the long side? Let's look at triangle FGH. What's the short side that I know? It's 12. What's the length of the longer side that I know? It's 24. I can simplify that fraction. What's the greatest common factor of 12 and 24? It's 12. 
When I divide both 12 and 24 by 12, what's the result? It's 1 half. So I know that the short side is always 1 half the length of the long side. I know the long side in triangle DEF. It's 32. So I can multiply by 1 half to find P. What's 32 times 1 half? Remember, 32 times 1 half is the same as 32 divided by 2. It's 16. P is equal to 16. Let's do another example. What's the ratio of the long side to the short side? Well, the long side I know is 24. The short side I know is 16. I can simplify that quotient. What's the greatest common factor of 24 and 16? It's 8. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And 16 divided by 8 is 2. So that fraction written in simplest form is 3 halves. I know that P is going to be 3 halves times the short side. Or... 20 times 3 halves. Let's multiply 20 times 3 halves. First, what's 20 times 3? It's 60. And the denominator stays 2. I can divide 60 divided by 2 to find P. What's 60 divided by 2? It's 30. Let's do a few more together. Look at triangle GHI. What's the ratio of the longer side to the short side? Well, it's 12 fifths over 6 fifths. Or 12 over 6. Go ahead and simplify 12 over 6. What's the greatest number that goes into both? 6 is the greatest number that goes into both 12 and 6. So that ratio is the same as 2 to 1. So what's the value of h? Well, h is 2 times as large as 6 fifths. So what's 6 fifths times 2 over 1? It's 12 over 5. h is equal to 12 over 5. Now let's look at d. d is two times as large as the short side of its triangle. So five times two over one. What's the value of D? It's 10. 10 is two times as much as five. We can also go the other way. What's the ratio of the short side to the longer side? Well, if the ratio of long to short is two to one, then the ratio of short to long is one to two. To find the value of C, I can multiply 4 times 1 half. What's 4 times 1 half? It's 2. The value of C is 2. Let's do two more. Look at these two triangles. What is the ratio of the medium side to the short side? Well, I can see that the medium side I know is 15, and the short side is 10. I can simplify that fraction. What's the greatest common factor of 15 and 10? It's 5. When I simplify, what's my new fraction? It's 3 halves. So what's the value of A? A is the medium side and 4 is the short side. So I can multiply 4 times 3 halves. What's 4 times 3 halves? 4 times 3 halves is 12 over 2, which is the same as 6. Now, let's solve our next problem. What's the ratio of the longer side to the medium side? Well, I know that the longer side is 9 and the medium side is 6. I can simplify that fraction. What's the largest number that goes into both 9 and 6? It's 3. 
So when I simplify, I get the fraction 3 over 2. To find b, I can multiply 15, the medium side, times 3 over 2. 15 times 3 is 45 over 2. When I divide, I get 22.5. So b is 22.5. Let's try one last problem. What's the ratio of the medium side to the long side? Well, the medium side I know is 15, and the long side is 20. What's the greatest common factor of 15 and 20? It's 5. So when I write that fraction in simplest form, I get 3 fourths. To find the value of b, I can multiply 12 times 3 fourths. Go ahead and do that now. What's the value of b? The value of b is 36 over 4, or 9. So, to find missing side lengths in similar triangles, I can use the relationships between the sides, just like I can use the scale factor between the two figures. You've done a great job on this video. Now go to tinyurl.com practice 918 to continue to practice.